question and kind of difficult to answer in a couple sentences but the journey has been very exciting primarily led by rules uh, that I followed which essentially men don't follow any rules so look at what the world is look at what you want to make it and make that world your own so really at every step of the journey if anybody told me I couldn't do something whether it be girls can't be good in math or you can't become an engineer or you can't go to the United States each time when somebody told me I couldn't do something I made it a point to do it. And that just kind of opened up new doors and new vistas, and it's been just so much fun all along the way. You know, again, I've been so blessed to be in 3M. Uh, I'm on my 21st year, and I can tell you, all our employees, there's something about being a 3M'er that excites us. Uh, one of our longest serving CEOs of the company, uh, McKnight, William McKnight, who's very, very well known for several of his uh, principles, we call them the McKnight principles, they're enshrined. He talked about the fact that management should hire good people and let them be. Smart people will make their own rules, make their own world, and make sure they're innovative. Frame's a very innovative company. We all like being appreciated for our spirit, for our innovation, for our thought process. He also brought in the 15% rule which means 15% of the time we can work on something that's our passion. He also said don't put fences around people, then you get sheep. So none of us are sheep, we are spirited 3Mers and we love being in 3M. You know, really, really good question and a tough question for uh, India in particular. So we look for people who are led by purpose. And if you can provide a greater purpose, a purpose that's higher than the monthly paycheck, a purpose that's higher than the PL and the percentage growth targets that we put on people, a purpose that's about applying science to life and transforming human lives. When you give a purpose to people, they stay with you for a long time. You know, it was fun today to talk to your students and I spoke about two words, learning agility. In the world of VUCA, it's not about knowing, it's about knowing how to learn, knowing how to find a path ahead, adapting yourself. So I again bring it back to learning agility. That's how you deal with the VUCA world. You know, that is probably one of the deepest questions we're facing right now as we look at skilling. We call it skilling because the learning is not getting people to a skill state that industry can hire, uh, work with and appreciate. There's still a lot more work to be done. But in higher education in India, I think we need to get move a little bit away from talking about syllabus to talking about learning. To truly inspire people to become curious, to pursue intellectual curiosity for the sake of it. That will help us move towards this learning agile, VUCA ready workforce that can be trained no matter what dimension uh, we are hiring them for and where, they, where we are taking them. So that would be my, my message, is forget the syllabus, forget the degrees, forget the stamps, teach students how to learn. say in my career each time there was a tough challenge or a tough problem I raised my hand. Very soon your signature becomes here is a person who can come and for on behalf of the company for the company solve some of the toughest problems. But let me go back a few years it's about three years. Um, I was a part of 3M's uh, oil and gas global oil and gas business. I was the global business director heading the oil and gas business. And when I started that role, oil was at $141 a barrel. When I left that business, oil was trading right around $36 a barrel. That changes your world, spins it on an axis. And I remember going to the corporate operating committee, our CEO and the heads of our company, and saying, you need to fire me. 
you need to take my job away because this is no longer relevant. What we had set out to do is no longer right. That was probably my biggest challenge. And I can tell you that day around the table in the highest levels of our company, I won the respect of each and every person in the room. So from those challenges come your greatest opportunities and you become who you are. Several, and I spoke about my core values with your students. I bring it back first and foremost ethics and an absolute commitment to bringing about energy into ethics, not just knowing, not just being, but driving ethics. Very, very important for me. I grew up with a set of parents who instilled that into me at a very early age, and I've never had to look anywhere else. I am anchored in ethics. The second piece that I think I brings uh, a different level of power to CEOs, to corporate leaders, to spread the good messages that we're here to do. Uh, instead of in person, now I have the power of the followers that I have, um, the LinkedIn connections that I have, the Facebook uh, family that I have. I have a power to spread the messages that I believe in, that I believe are important to society. So I'm a bit of a social media, media addict now, what I do though is be, um, do it in a disciplined manner because you can give your entire life to social media, you stop achieving. So I have times in my life when I act, whether it be early morning, where I see what's happened in the world. If there are Himadas that's happened this morning. Um, at night, I look at how did the world end today and are there messages for me to spread from my day or their message uh, that others have posted that I need to learn about or I get some ideas from. So I think social media has given tremendous power to leaders that we didn't have before. Uh, you would learn about leaders from books. Today you experience leaders, you hear them, you watch them, almost real time. So it's very, very powerful. I am looking forward to learning from you, you think, on social media. You know, every generation tells the next that they're not getting it right, that the earth and the world is in trouble because they're not doing something. My only advice, my guidance to the generation is do what you think is right, do what you feel is right. Um, I don't think people who died 300 years ago could have seen this world. People like us who won't be there when you're in your 50s and your 60s don't know what the world would be that we would be facing. So do what feels right, listen to your hearts, adapt, be agile, learn, and you're gonna create the world that we don't even know about today.